people's happy to be in God's presence. If you have a good Bible, let's open our Bibles briefly to the book of Genesis chapter 49, verse 9 to 10. And then you can also flip over to the book of Revelation chapter 5, verse 5. Judah is a lion's whelp from the prey. My son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people. Revelation 5.5. 5. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Let us pray. Father, we just want to thank you for the entrance of your word. that has got the power to transform our lives and destinies. As the word comes, let it come to give us an inheritance and let God's people say, Amen. I have titled today's message, Reign as a Lion, Live Like a Lamb. If you desire to change the world and promote peace, you must learn to fight like a lion, but live like a lamb among people. A combination of both guarantees success and peace. In the 21st century, we are faced with many challenges. You have drought, you have wildfire, you have economic challenges, political unrest, civil unrest, terror, and the coronavirus, the pandemic that has ravaged the economies of nations of the world. But in all this, we're supposed to live like conquerors because the Bible tells me that we are more than conquerors. Jesus paid a price so that we can live and reign as sons of God. Despite the crisis, we must not forget who we are. We are a nation of kings and priests. And God has not given dominion to the demons, neither has he given dominion to evil men. He has given dominion to the sons of God. We are the called out ones. We are the chosen ones. We are the ecclesia. And so for us to reign successfully and to excel in our highest aspiration, then we must understand that we are not just ordinary people. There's something uniquely special about your destiny. The spiritual DNA you carry is the DNA of conquest. The spiritual DNA you carry is the DNA of a king. And a priest. Our kingly mandate gives us the right to dominate nations of the world. And our priestly mandate gives us the right to manifest as lamb. That means every believer must possess the two dominant qualities of Jesus. A high priest. Jesus lived and died as a lamb and so that he could reign as a king. You don't know better than him. You ain't as righteous as him. Your righteousness is derived from his righteousness. And so if we want to do supernatural things, if we want to transform the world, then we must understand that we need to live like lions in order to manifest successfully as lamb. A lion does not need the approval of a wolf to rule the jungle. And so, as a believer, you don't need the approval of the devil to fulfill your divine destiny. There are challenges. There are crises. There are things that can stop ordinary people. But there's nothing ordinary about you. The Bible tells me that in all these near, we are modern conquerors. Having conquered principalities and powers, he gave us the dominion mandate. That which was lost was restored back to us so that we can become the sole dominant rulers of this planet. But sadly, believers are living in fear when they should live in that mandate of dominion. We ain't victims. We're born of God. We're born of God's spirit. We're born of God's power. 
And the Bible tells me that he that comes from above is above all. I speak into your destiny this Lord's day. Everyone under the influence of the sound of my voice, I declare that you will rise up to the needs of the hour. You will overcome all your pain and challenges. You will overcome all your pains. You will overcome your fear. You will overcome sickness. You will overcome poverty. You will overcome everything. I speak into nations of the world that we are coming out of poverty, coming out of pain, coming out of diseases, coming out of everything that does not promote righteousness. If you're a believer under the influence of the sound of my voice, held on by crisis, held on by calamity, I want you to know that there is something that lives in you. It is the power of God. The power of God that lives in you is able to take you out of sickness. It's able to take you out of poverty. It's able to take you out of things that can hold ordinary men down. The Bible tells me that whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are an overcomer. You will overcome your pain. You will overcome your crisis. You will overcome everything that has put you down. I declare so shall it be. Give son a half five and say this is my time. I am stepping up into the glory. I'm stepping up into the realm of power. I am stepping up into the realm of faith. If you believe that shout hallelujah. There is something I like about the lion. The lion lives an intentional life. He rules the jungle. He determines how he lives. He's not a victim of circumstances. He's not a victim of pain. He knows that for, for him to survive... He needs to manifest strength. A lion is a symbol of strength, courage, royalty, power, and dominion. While the lamb represents humility, obedience, peace, gentleness, and sacrifice. But we must live a life that is a life of balance. Makes no sense if you are in a nation of lions to want to rule as a lamb. When a lamb attempts to rule a nation of lions, the lamb is going to fail. Only lions can rule lions. Only the dominant lion can rule other lions. So you can't rule lions when you have the nature of the lamb. While a lamb follows, lions lead. Have you ever wondered why many marriages are failing? Because the husband by nature must manifest as a lion to protect his home. While the woman has to manifest as a lamb. But in a home where the woman is attempting to manifest as a lion, there's going to be conflict. We must create a balance. When we live among believers, we must manifest the nature of the lamb. Because sheep flock together. But when we live among unbelievers, when we live among wolves, we cannot afford to be dormant. A sheep cannot live among wolves because the wolves will devour the sheep. The Bible tells me in the book of Proverbs chapter 30, verse 29 to 30, there are three things which are majestic in pace. Yes, four which are stately in walk. A lion which is mighty among beasts and does not turn away from any. The mindset of the lion is a mindset of dominion. It does not run away from a fight. The reason Christians are not doing well is because they don't know how to have a balanced life. Some are extremely too aggressive and some are extremely too passive. The Bible tells me that there is a time for everything. 
you will die in a jungle when you manifest as a lamb. But you rule the jungle when you begin to manifest as a lion. You cannot put a sheep in charge of a jungle. You cannot put a sheep in charge of the wolf. The wolf is going to destroy the sheep. God expects believers in the 21st century to manifest greatness and power. In every spectrum of life. The devil does not bow to humility. The only language he understands is power. If you want to bind demonic forces, you must declare, you must hold on, you must manifest the power of God. Jesus did not send the disciples out without empowering them. I have a dream that someday believers are going to manifest superior power in every spectrum of life. I believe that in the world of politics, business, science, and technology, and in the world of commerce, and all manner of things, that believers are going to manifest. That's why the Bible tells me in the book of Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, so then shall you be my witnesses. You can testify about what you are not empowered to do. It is the power of God that takes us from glory to glory. It is the power of God that takes us from strength to strength. It is the power of God that takes us to the highest position. It is the power of God that takes us to the highest offices. God's power is what gives you guarantee to make wealth. God's power gives you the ability to create uncommon things, uncommon inventions. God's power is your ultimate. First Corinthians 420 tells me that the kingdom of God is not in words but in power. Power to do things, the ability to do things. For too long, believers have complained. In 2020, when the whole world was in a lockdown and people were trying to make ends meet, 2,200 men, the richest men in the world, they made a profit, a net profit of $1.9 trillion. Power. The Bible tells us that we shall be the head and not the tail. The Abrahamic blessings as reflected in Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, tells us that in us shall all the families of the earth be blessed. I believe that Christians will rise up to the needs of the hour. The most dominant religion in Africa is Christianity. Especially in sub-Saharan Africa. That means if Christians are in charge. The continent ought to have been transformed the way God wants it. We have so much Christians in Africa. Unparalleled. Never seen in any continent like that in the world. The type of Christianity we have back home. Is dominant, yet terrorists, criminal gangs, corrupt politicians, they have turned that place into hell. That's not dominion, that's weakness. If a lion reigns, the coyotes cannot manifest. When the lion rows, the wolves flee. When the lions row, the hyenas run. When lions are in a place, they establish order. The most dominant religion in the U.S. is Christianity. Yet, that country has continued to suffer gun violence and all manner of unrest. It is time for believers to take their place. It is time for believers to manifest as sons of God. The Bible tells me that the entire creation groans for the manifestation of the sons of God. I pray that righteousness is going to flow like an ever-flowing stream in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in North America, in South America, in Australia, in Antarctica, and in all parts of the world. In the jungle, the options are few. Live like a lion 
or die as a lamb? The question is, do you want to dominate? Do you want to manifest the power of dominion? It's up to you. You have the power to live like a lion or die as a lamb. If you have a lion in your camp, it is unwise to send a lamb to confront a wolf. The Bible tells me in the book of Matthew chapter 10 verse 16, Behold, I send you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. Therefore, be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Luke chapter 10 verse 3, Go your way, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. In this world of chaos, when you meet people who are ungodly, you cannot manifest as a lamb. Let the lion in you rise up to the needs of the owl. Acts chapter 20, verse 29. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. The reason we've seen all manner of evil seeping into the church is because the pastors and church leaders are not manifesting as lions. That's why wolves come into the church and they harm the sheep. Humility is not stupidity. The Bible tells me that right from the days of John the Baptist, God's kingdom has suffered violence and it takes the violent to take it by force. When you know that the agencies of death, they've multiplied themselves and they're coming to try to seek to destroy you, you can't afford to sleep. You must fight. When you know that the destiny of your nation is at stake, you have to fight. When you know that the destiny of your children is at stake, you have to fight. When you know that the destiny of your marriage is under attack, you have to fight. Because the weapons of our warfare ain't kind of but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We pray until something happens. We pray until nations are transformed. We pray until diseases are destroyed. We pray until men and women are transformed and conformed to the image of God. I want to see righteousness in this nation. I want to see righteousness in the nations of the world. I want to see righteousness flowing like an ever-flowing stream. I can't rest until righteousness is established in all parts of the world. I have a dream that someday God's going to raise apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists, men equipped with the fire of God. In a world aflame with fire, God has raised firemen to fight fire with fire. Jesus died as a lamb so that he can rule as a lion. We have a divine mandate to reign with him as kings and priests. A king has the authority to expand the kingdom frontiers. If you want to be a successful king, then you must be a warrior king. We fight through prayer. We fight through knowledge. We fight through God's grace. Revelation 1.6 And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. It makes no sense if you have the mandate of a king and you live as a slave. It makes no sense. That's contrary to the influence of dominion. God gave you wisdom so that you can use your wisdom to change the world of technology. God gave you wisdom so that you can come out with economic principles never seen before, never practiced before. God gave you wisdom so that in your wisdom you can come out with some of the best architectural structures that eyes have never seen before. God gave you wisdom so that you can come out with the best medical procedures and medical inventions never made before. I believe that the church of God is coming out. 
God has given us the power to get wealth. If you are a child of God and you're going through crisis, shake off yourself. Shake off the beast. Shake off the shackles of poverty. Shake off the shackles of depression and take your place. As long as you have a dream, run with that dream. Think like a king. Be as intentional as a lion and rule your territory. The problem we have as believers, we don't know how to manage our time. There is a time for play. But there is a time for dominion. God sent us to this planet to dominate it. And you can only maintain the power of dominion when you know how to expand your territory. Dominion means expansion. Dominion means production. Dominion means the ability to rule. If you cannot dominate the circumstances of life, failure will dominate you. Crisis will dominate you. Pain will dominate you. Don't be fooled. In the world, there are only two categories of people, winners and losers. That's why the Bible tells me that I can do all things. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Revelation 2, 26 to 27. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels as I also have received from my Father. Hallelujah. Your destiny is the destiny of a leader. A leader that rides through the storms in the winds of grace. The lion nature represents kingship, power, authority, dominion, and victory. While the lamb Personality highlights our priestly service, true love, humility, and patience. His spiritual gifts are magnified to the detriment of spiritual fruits. Failure is certain. When you manifest power without manifesting the fruits of the Spirit, it can be harmful. 2 Timothy 1.7 For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power of love, and of a sound mind. Genesis 1, 27 to 28. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Dominion is your destiny. God has given us the power of dominion. We have the power to determine how the world is going to be in the next 10 to 20 years. We have the power. We have the power to determine the economies of nations. We have the power. God is not going to demand or ask you to do something that you have not been equipped to do. All the wonders you seek elsewhere lies within you. There is the power of God in you. There is a power that works in you, for you, through you. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 7. There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So imagine what is going to happen when Christians 
everywhere begins to manifest their full potentials. That's the only way we can change the world. We can't change the world by playing partisan politics. We can't change the world by running behind politicians and asking them to change the world for us. No. We change the world by taking our positions as kings and priests. That's how we change the world. Because we have the ministry of reconciliation. The entire creation is not groaning for the manifestation of politicians, no. The entire creation is waiting, praying, groaning, grasping for the manifestation of the sons of God. And we are the sons of God. I prophesy that the sons of God will manifest in the 21st century and we will transform the world for Jesus. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. But you cannot manifest the gift of God without understanding the fruit. So every believer is both a lion and a lamb. When you focus excessively on your gift without your fruit, you're going to be a problem rather than a blessing to the world. Galatians 5. 22 to 25. For the fruit of the Spirit is love. Do you have love? Any gift that is exercised without love will never glorify God. If you read Matthew 14, 14, the Bible tells me that Jesus saw the multitude and he had compassion over the sick. And he healed them. So he exercised his gift of healing based on his love. We can't heal nations of the world no matter how strong our ideology is. No matter how strong our will is. No matter how strong our conviction is. We can never transform the nations of the world without love. So a strong leader who lacks love is simply a tyrant. God does not use tyrants to change the world. God uses men of strong character, men of tested character. David was a warrior king. David was a lion king. Or yet, David was also a lamb to his people was a man of love. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Spiritual people manifest the spirit of God. No matter how gifted you are, if you don't have love, it amounts to nothing. John chapter 10, verse 2 to 3. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him, the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I want to see sheep in the church of God. When we gather together as a people, we cannot manifest as lions. Because if we do that, we're going to devour one another. But when we go out and we confront the wolves outside, that's when we should manifest as lions. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. When David confronted and defeated Goliath, he set a spiritual standard and model for all believers. If lions fail to conquer and rule their territories, scavengers will take over cities and terrorize the world. 
when the lion, the lion king David stood before Goliath, the terrorist, he was bold. He knew what he wanted. He knew that this was an abnormal thing. It is abnormal for people to subdue God's children. It is abnormal for any earthly power or any spiritual power to hold the church of God in ransom. I thank God for doctors. I thank God for all the great things they're doing. They can only treat, but only God can heal. Why would you allow the reports of men to determine your destiny? Why would you allow the devil to determine your destiny? When Goliath showed up for 40 days and 40 nights, he, he called the shots. He determined the direction of the battle. And the people of Israel watched helplessly the same way Christians are watching helplessly. I speak to my brothers and sisters everywhere in the world. From the north to the east, from the west to the south. I speak and I declare into your spirit, rise up to the needs of the hour. The Bible tells me whatever we agree here on earth shall be agreed in heaven. Whatever we disallow on earth shall be disallowed in heaven. I declare today in the name of Jesus that there shall be no trouble, there shall be no death, there shall be no sickness, there shall be no pandemic in different parts of the world in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that God's hand will be upon the nations of the world and I open the prison doors to those who are bound and I declare that you are coming out of darkness and stepping into God's marvelous light. I declare that every mountain will be brought low and every valley exalted and the crooked paths be made straight so that the glory of God will appeal to all nations. I declare for those who are under the influence of the sound of my voice, those bound by sickness, those bound by poverty, those bound by paralysis, I declare, take up your bed, rise up, and walk into your destiny. Walk into goodness. Walk into mercy. Walk into greatness. Walk into fame. Walk into power. And give God all the glory. We must live the life that God has called us to live. Uncolonized, unhindered, unrivaled, unequaled, and undefeated. Isaiah 61, verse 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. This is who we are. We are agents of change. We are agents of the good news. We were raised to raise others. We were transformed to transform the world. In conclusion, let's read the book of Joel chapter 2, 1 to 11. We are a great army. Blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountains. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming. For it is at hand a day of darkness and gloominess. A day of clouds and thick darkness. Like the morning clouds spread over the mountains. A people come, great and strong. The like of whom has never been nor will there ever be any such after them. Even for many successive generations, a fire devours before them. And behind them, a flame burns. The land is like the garden of Eden before them. And behind them, a desolate wilderness. Surely, 
nothing shall escape them. Their appearance is like the appearance of horses, and like swift steeds, so they run. With a noise like chariots, over mountain tops they leap, like the noise of a flaming fire that devours the stubble, like a strong people set in battle array. Before them the people writhe in pain, all faces are drained of color. They run like mighty men, they climb the wall like men of war. Everyone marches in formation, and they do not break ranks. They do not push one another. Everyone marches in his own column. Though they launch between the weapons, they are not cut down. They run to and fro the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter the windows like a thief. The earth quakes before them. The heavens tremble. The sun and moon grow dark. And the stars diminish their brightness. The Lord gives voice before his army. For his camp is very great. For strong is the one who executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great. And very terrible. Who can endure it? This is the glorious army that God has enlisted you into. You know who you are. You know who we are. A people strong and great. There is no defeat written in your spiritual DNA. For you to activate your spiritual DNA, you must walk by faith. We are not moved by what we see. We are moved by what the word of God says concerning us. I don't know what you think the devil has spoken into your life. But I want you to know that your DNA is much more greater than what you can see. Eyes have not seen. Neither ears heard. Neither as it entered the heart of man, what God has planned for you and I, it's time for us to manifest as kings and priests. It's time for us to manifest as lions and lambs. It's time for us to manifest as conquerors. It's time for us to manifest as warriors. It's time for us to manifest as the anointed ones of God. It's time for us to manifest. What are you waiting for? I don't know what your project is. Do not allow the pandemic to define your life. Rise up and begin to fulfill your dream. Go back to the drawing board. Take that vision. Run with the vision. Fulfill your destiny. God is coming soon. Jesus is coming very soon. But Jesus is not going to come to receive a weak church. He's coming for a warrior church. He's coming for a righteous church. He's coming to see and receive a church that is without wrinkles. I don't know what your situation is, but I came to tell you that we are more than conquerors. Everything you've gone through, thank God he prepared you so that you can be a voice and a testimony. That pain will not destroy you. It's going to be turned into gain. Your purpose will be realized. You just have to believe. Rise up and fulfill your destiny. I want you to stand to your feet. Father, I just want to thank you for your sons and daughters. Lord, I pray that you cause them to be a nation of kings and priests. Make them more than conquerors. Everything that has come to fight against their destinies, I rebuke it and I declare that by the stripes of Jesus you'll be made whole. I declare that every difficult gate, every difficult thing in your life, every evil door open against you shall be shut. I declare that all gates that are contrary to the purpose of God in your life be shut right now in the name of Jesus. I release good health upon you, long life, peace, and favor. You shall not die, but live to declare the glory of God. May the Lord bless you and cause his countenance to be on you. Thank you for answered prayers, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. And for those who are watching me online and you desire to walk with God, manifesting as a lion and living like a lamb, I pray that God's face will shine upon you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you can say this after me, Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God. You died to set me free. Today, I renounce all my sins. With my heart, I believe, and with my mouth, I confess. Come into my life and become my personal Lord and Savior. If you just pray that prayer, I want to welcome you to God's kingdom. A kingdom of unlimited possibilities, power, joy, praise, and righteousness. 
Follow the address on the screen below, and you can contact us anytime you want. Continue to follow us and tell your friends to subscribe to our Facebook and YouTube channel. God bless you.